Hello, 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 everyone. Dr. Rowena Winkler here, and we are here with Revelations with Rowena. <laughs> I am so excited to have Chris and Cravens here with me today to talk about something that I know a lot of us out there have been contending with, especially the past couple of years. And what beautiful timing as we're in May, Mental Health Awareness Month. Chris is here to talk to us about stress, emotions, and anxiety, three things that I know a lot about <laughs> in my own personal life. I'm sure a lot of you do as well. So Chris, thank you so much for being here today. It's, it's just of so course. great. Of course. Thank you for having me. No problem. So we usually start things off just by having you share your story and what brought you to doing the work that you do. Well, um, there's a quite a few things added to it along the way, of course, but kind of the key, um, key issues or, or moments in my life were dealing with my mother who had a lot of anxiety and depression. Of course, I didn't know this till later, mm -hmm. um, but I grew up with that. Um, she slept a lot, took lots of naps, ended up later um, having a lot of um, health conditions that ended up taking her life when she was 49 years old. Oh, wow. um, and this was, this was 20 years ago when she passed. So back then, um, we didn't have as much with pain management and people really watching what was going on with different prescriptions. And she accidentally overdosed um, mm. one evening on her medications, which happened to be the night before I was supposed to get married. Oh, my so, gosh. And we found her the next morning. And, of course, everything changed. Um, but really... What that had done for me, um, of course, it, it, like I said, everything changed. My whole life changed, my whole perspective. And I realized that I was starting to go down the same path that she had been going down with, with health care and with my emotions. And just, um, as she would say, spiraling down mm -hmm. um, and just with this whole onslaught of um, aches and pains in the body. I had back stuff. I had mm -hmm. headaches. I had, you know, all these little things, um, to back up a little bit. She was one of the first people to be diagnosed with fibromyalgia, oh, yeah. Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, and on and on and on. So it was, um, a compilation of things and she really internalized her emotions and I remember one night when I was probably about six, maybe my sister was 10-ish or so, um, we were riding home in our Volkswagen van and my parents were having a disagreement in the front and they assumed we were sleeping in the back. So, so we pretended we were still sleeping. And she proclaimed that the dysfunction that she had taken or had gotten from her, her upbringing was going to stop with her. She wasn't going to pass it to her children. And she just just proclaim this in this, in this, I'm going to say a rage that she had in this fit, emotional fit she was having. Mm. And as I got older and got into holistic health, I realized that one, that was one of the key moments where she really did internalize things, not letting it go mm. and not there any way to process all that old stuff. Yeah. And it was just literally eating her up inside. Mm. Um, so I learned from that. I watched it when she passed. I was like, wow, I'm going down the same road. I don't want to do this. And a few weeks after she passed, I was watching a movie and I realized in that hour and a half ish of the movie that I went through just an entire slew of emotions from one end of the spectrum to the other and bouncing all around mm. in that short amount of time. And I felt really exhausted after I watched the film. And I had to stop and think about why are you so tired? What's going on? And I thought about the emotions and realized that in a regular day in my waking life, I would never come across that many different emotions or, or triggers to emotions in that short amount of time. And I was like, wait a minute, we weren't really meant, we weren't really wired to be able to handle this onslaught of all this stuff coming in at us really mm. fast. So what that did for me is I, I, I say I went cold turkey on entertainment for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and I really just, I backed it off. I turned off the TV. I didn't watch movies. Um, that was when the internet was just coming in, into play and stuff. Yeah. And so I, that, I backed off with that. 
And I really started thinking, okay, if I can't control what's going on in the world, at least I can control what's going on in my house to some degree. Mm -hmm. And I control the input coming in from the news and the television, like I say, the movies, all, all of that external. And it was a way of me to kind of rein things in and see what I was feeling and see what was going on with me because I couldn't separate hmm. at that point. I, I couldn't separate what I was feeling, what I was seeing, what other people were saying to me, what they were feeling. Hmm. It was a big muddled mess of input. <laughs> Yeah. So it, it really sparked a journey into, my, into the holistic health field for me. Um, hence the accidental prescription drug overdose. I was like, okay, I'm not taking anything anymore. Yeah. I, you know, stopped with my, my pain meds and all that. Of course I checked with my doctor. I didn't really need them anymore. Um, and I really just started looking for natural means and, and, by that, I don't just mean like things to take to make myself feel better, but I started doing yoga. I became a yoga instructor. Mm -hmm. I became a massage therapist, Reiki. I did learn about herbs and, and things like that as well. Um, and eventually I stub stumbled upon the body talk system, mm -hmm. which ended up being a dashboard for me to run everything by. So a way to check and see what modality like massage, yoga, and herb, some sort of some sort of um, technique that someone might need in order to make themselves better or help themselves get better. Hmm. So for me, it was kind of night and day. I ended up on a body talk practitioner's table seven years to the day of my mother's death. Wow. And I didn't plan it. <laughs> and I realized after the session that that, that was actually the date and the whole session was about me picking up emotions from my mother and what mm. she went through, the grief and pain that I was carrying with me from her situation, from the family situation. And we did a bunch of energetic techniques that really lifted that weight and lifted that, that heaviness of the grief and the pressure of all that for me. Mm -hmm. And from that moment on, I really had a life-changing experience in being able to manage my emotions a lot better. And they, they gradually started to get better. I had a, a big change right away, a, very noticeable. But then just little things started whittling away. And I became a lot more stable with being able to support people that were going through trauma. Um, I joke and say that my friend used to come to me and say, oh, my dog died and I'd cry with them and not be able to be there for them was the example. Mm -hmm. and, and instead I can now, I can still cry with them if I want, but I'm not, I don't go down into the abyss with them and I'm mm -hmm. able to be that helping hand to help lift someone back up and out of the abyss because I'm able to, to know what's mine and what's theirs, that boundary, yeah. Yeah. which is really confusing for people, especially times like we've been through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, my story goes on and on where I was tested with it, but um, people can, can read about more of that in my book. I will, I'll, I'll talk about some more fun stuff here. <laughs> Certainly. Well, thank you so much for, for sharing so much about your, your history, your story. I'm so sorry to hear about your mom. I can only imagine the day before your wedding. That's, that's, I'm so sorry to hear that. And, yeah, was you know, really unexpected. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But setting in motion, you know, the, the, the path that you've been on to, to release, you know, what has happened um, to her and like that generational stuff that's been going on. Um, for folks that are not familiar with the body talk method, could you speak to that? Like, what does that entail? What does that involve? Of course, um, the body talk system itself, it's, it's an entire system and it also is a modality. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I say it's an entire system is it, it, it merges seamlessly with other modalities. So whether someone's a, say a chiropractor, an acupuncturist, um, a therapist of any kind working in health, health and wellness, it can really dovetail into um, someone's practice mm -hmm. and help guide um, them intuitively. So it's basically teaches you how 
to use your intuition in a very practical manner. Oh, we love that. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, what, what practitioners are trained in is to be able to ask your body a series of yes and no questions based on a protocol chart that we use. And those questions, those yeses and nos, guide us to know what areas of, of your body or the, the client's body um, want to be relinked so they can communicate. Because the basic premise is, is when, when we have our communication garbled, kind of like I was talking about earlier, we can't communicate or, and we can't heal. Mm. So you can think of, of someone, if they cut their finger and put a bandaid, you know, clean it, put a bandaid on it. We don't have to tell it what to do. Typically we heal unless we have a lot of stuff going on. It could be mm. um, illness. It could be other stresses, things like that, that, take the body's energy and attention away from healing. And that can, that can happen on, every, on so many levels, not just from the little cut, but all the way up to serious diseases. Wow. Uh, so being able to work with the body, ask it where, where the communications broke down and where it needs to relink that communication. Mm -hmm. So it can wrap its way back to a better state of, of being. So a, a better state of health. And that's kind of a, a um, simple <laughs> explanation. Yeah. Um, well, that, thank you. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, it's, it's fascinating how many of us do not or have a, a, a limited amount of body awareness, right? I know for me personally, it was when I started practicing yoga, you know, I know you mentioned that as a modality and that you're, you're a teacher um, with that. It wasn't until I went on that journey with yoga for me to realize, oh, wait, there are like things happening, you know, with my body and having that awareness that I didn't even realize. Um, so I love that this system, you know, has the, that communication with your body right. in an intuitive way. And you, you just said it, there's that connection. So we're not aware of what's happening in our big toe or, you know, our kidney or whatever, unless it's, it's speaking up with a symptom. Right. And then we go, oh, what's going on? And then we look at the symptom. And they're like, why, why, why did that, how did we get that pain in the kidney or in the toe or whatever? Um, so it's about really um, getting to the underlying story. Because um, as we all know, stress, traumas, and all those types of things, they add up. Yes. And then they express themselves into a, a disease or illness, mm -hmm. which is the study of epigenetics, for anyone who wants to Google that further. Um, so it's really looking at the whole person not just what's going on with the symptoms and, and we're letting the body tell the story and we listen. So we're kind of like translators. So the body talks, we listen, and then we do a series of um, techniques, uh, protocols um, that are really simple to do. A lot of them in, involve tapping and, and holding intention and, mm -hmm. and different things. Some people may be familiar with EFT, EMDR, yeah. things like that. So we incorporate some of those tools in there. Um, but, but the thing that really makes it unique is we're able to ask the body, is this a priority or not? And if it says, no, okay, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? And we just systematically go through an entire list of, of um, organs, endocrines, body parts, body parts, body systems, um, endocrine, I already said endocrines, um, chakras, energies, yeah. and, uh, and all kinds of things like that, um, which make up what's going on with us, right? The story. Yes. yes. No, yeah. that is fantastic. I, I mean, you can, I'm like, my eyes are so wide. That is fascinating because you're right. You know, the, I think, especially from like a Western medicine standpoint, it's just ta going for the symptom, right? Like not really getting to the root of, of the issue or the condition or the disease or what's happening. So I love that this system is, getting to the stories. Cause I wholeheartedly agree, right? There's always a story related to what's happening with our bodies. And I love that, you know, I've engaged in both EFT tapping and um, EMDR. So, you know, it's, I love that it integrates a lot of these different modalities, as you mentioned, that's, that's fantastic. Really, really if it's in existence, it can be used as a tool. That's really so cool. each practitioner comes to the table 
with a whole slew of skills that are, is unique to that practitioner. And, and if that practitioner has a skill, something that they've learned, whether it's plumbing or football or whatever, um, you know, maybe they've learned something there. I'm going to say in football, maybe someone got an injury and they know something, you know, from, from yeah. injury, healthcare, whatever. But you can bring, what I'm saying is you can bring it all in yeah. and, and really just check with the body. Is this, is this what we're dealing with? And you mentioned a minute ago um, the idea of Western and Eastern medicine. Yeah. The beauty of this is it takes the two and it appreciates okay. both and it brings it together. So, yes, there's times we're going to need surgery and stitches mm -hmm. and, and all that really hands-on Western medical. But then there's other times where, you know, it's the emotions and the spiritual yeah. aspects and the tra these traumas, again, emotions – that are just packed into the physical body that are held in our cells mm -hmm. and to be able to have a pathway out and have someone help guide you with that is just golden. Really, really. Uh, I love you. that. I love that. I love that. It's not, you know, it's not demonizing one side or the other, that it's taking both and integrating it in this, in this beautiful, beautiful way. Also, I love the fact that, yeah, that the practitioner comes as they are, with their tools, their experiences. And so it can be a beautiful experience based off of who you're working with. Typically, how long does a session go? Is it, is there a whole? Depends. In the beginning, I'd say typically what I find is sessions go a little bit longer because mm -hmm. we have that kind of basic stuff to take care of until we get to you know the, the meat of it, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but typically an hour-ish. Mm -hmm a little longer, sometimes a little less. And just, again, depending on what the body wants to do. And and the session, sessions work in layers. So sometimes the first few sessions are prepping you to get ready for a bigger shift later that, you know, we know the traumas we've been through. We don't want to go through any more of that icky stuff. And your body knows that. So this is about mapping a way mm. that's easeful and palatable and isn't going to shake you up and and make you kind of relive it um as a lot of traditional therapies some kinds yeah out go through the nitty-gritty and it's not that we won't talk about some things that come up but we don't have to sit there and dig and dig and dig and dig because the body is ready it presents what it wants and and it's like okay we're good today with that or or no we want to do more so, and, and we can feel that when we're in a session, when I'm in a session with someone, it's just like, okay, we're at the edge today. This is, this is good. Wow. Um, or, or if they're, they're, they're ready for more. So um, there's just really, you know, you open the bag and it's endless. Um, it's a very comprehensive system um, that's really coming up um, right now. So I'm excited to talk about it here. Get this, get this word yeah. out even more. Word out. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I love that. Yeah, that you're you can sense right when you're getting to your edge, and that it's not you know that that, that there's yeah that it's intuitive, and that you're mm -hmm. you know you're not going like the body's like no nope, mm, like that's 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 amazing that's fascinating. You think about when you practice yoga, right? And you're mm -hmm. in a pose, and you get to, you know you you want to go further, but it starts feeling like yeah, yeah. No. you're forcing it you're pushing it yeah. or i might get hurt ouch um, yes. it's kind of like that there's like this uncomfortable oh, feeling a little constricted here yeah. and that's that's an uncomfortable feeling we it's a it's a, that scared almost a panic feeling that people get especially when oh. they have anxiety gotcha and so we can find an edge there where we back off we find where the body's had enough and we're, we're because the body tells us it's not up to me as the practitioner or even the client on the table. It's up to their innate wisdom as to mm -hmm. what we're going to do that day. So you you know you mentioned the anxiety, and we're talking about you know the the title, I suppose, or the topic at hand is the stress, emotions, and anxiety. As you know, we're not completely out of COVID nineteen, the pandemic. We're still contending with. Um, what's happening there. So in your observations with your clients and what, like, what, what have you been seeing in terms of how we're storing the past mm. two plus years, you know? Yeah, it's, it's of course unique for different people sure. in different situations, of course, but in general, 
I mean, even people who are practitioners like me, it's mm -hmm. like, and so happy I have tools. The people searching for tools are kind of, um, people are either in overwhelm, don't know what to do, yeah. um, kind of a despair, um, that kind of sense of wanting to give up at some times. Mm -hmm. And then of course there's other moments where it's like, no, we're going to, we're going to do this. We can, we can, you know, we're strong and, and finding the resources deep within. So mm -hmm. I think really people waver a lot, I think is kind of what's common. Yeah. And some, some moments were strong, other moments were not. And seeing all of the discord right now, I think people are really, really reaching for a way to communicate and heal mm -hmm. and to help communication with others. If we can heal ourselves so we're not as reactive, Yes, we can listen better. We can listen from our hearts. We can speak from our hearts, run everything through the heart filter <laughs> in and out. And that's what's so hard. It's that knee-jerk reaction that triggers. It's this mm -hmm. and that and it triggers us into that fight or flight and we get all panicky again mm -hmm. or we freeze and we don't want to go forward. Mm -hmm. you know, there's, all, there's all these different reactions, but to be able to get recentered, I think is the common um, need. Yeah. Yeah. It's just to have some tools where they can reset themselves and then, and then come back at it when they can breathe more deeply, when they can have a more clear focus mind, which hence the pandemic, right? We're seeing so many of these long COVID things with brain fog and fatigue mm -hmm. and pains and organ damage and things like that. So there's, there's all kinds of branches within the body talk system and even um, body intuitive has now um, is a kind of a spinoff um, going a lot more down the science rabbit hole. Um, mm. A lot of, um, and actually they're doing a lot of case studies and things with the long COVID right now. So, and mm. getting very good results, I might say, with this type of work um, and uh, helping improve symptoms. Yeah, I, I love the part you brought up in terms of getting recentered and not being so reactive, right? Because you know, we've been thrown into this, you know, folks were in lockdown, you're spending time with family and folks that, you know, we weren't <laughs> expecting to hang out with for so long and just getting back to, you know, how can we, you know, use like you said, the heart, heart filter. That's, that's yeah. really. And the yeah. boundaries. Cause like you say, when you're, you're with people all the time and picking up on people's stuff and nah, 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 nah. so to be able to define your boundary better when you're in close quarters mm. and, and be able to communicate clearly and express yourself and hear people more clearly. It's mm. all part of this. It's all part of, of unraveling things, which brings down the, the anxiety levels, brings down those stress levels. And each time we gain a tool, we have one more tool in the toolkit that we can access um, each, each time we um, get faced with these triggers again. So you mentioned, you know, the using that heart filter, what, a, what, what advice would you give to, for folks who may be so like closed off or, you know, a lot has happened in their history. There's trauma, there's things like, how can we... Right. <laughs> open that up. What I try to teach people, and again, with, with different techniques, we can help the body um, uh, assimilate these kind of things. And that's not even a good word. Um, the, the word's slipping me right now. Integrate. That's the word. Mm -hmm. Integrate um, quickly. But it's more of this being able to understand that everyone's looking through a unique lens Everyone's had a unique story, a unique situation that's affected their hearts, that's mm -hmm. affected how they can receive love, give love, mm -hmm. even their self-love, all of these types of things. So if we can just take a moment and realize how difficult it is for us sometimes to communicate from the heart with however much I mean, we only know what we've all been through, right? Each person right. knows 
right. so you don't know. It's that whole thing of you never know what 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 someone else sure. you know, in someone else's shoes, I guess is the saying. Yeah. Um, so it's really being able to put on that lens of compassion, right? Heart mm -hmm. compassion. And give people the benefit of the doubt. Okay, they're doing the best that they can in this moment with the tools that they have, with mm -hmm. what they've been through, with the conditions. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when we want to react because people are, they're spouting off things that we either don't agree with or are painful or whatever, mm -hmm. it's, that's the pain that they're, that they're projecting at us. Right. And you know, that can get sticky people. Oh, stop projecting that on me or whatever. You know, but if we can really step up as adults and really come up, step to the plate when something like that is happening, it's like, wow, you're spewing all that out at me. Oh my gosh, look at all that oof mm. in there. And to not take it personally is usually the hardest part. Oh, yes. That is so hard to not take it personally when. Right. Yeah. And wow. to be able to be that sounding board and be like, oh, okay, I hear what you're saying. And and maybe that's not the right time to react. Maybe there's a time to react. Maybe not. But sometimes let people get it out. Hmm. Take a breath. And whether they're right or wrong, who's right, who's wrong, whatever, that can be left for later if ever but really kind of taking a breath to look at what just happened and look at all the ick that just came up rather than trying to point fingers and blame. Oh no, you did this and you did that. Cause it gets a muddled mess of blame because we've all done a hundred things, a million things <laughs> that someone else might not like. Sure. And so we can nitpick on every one of those things or we can stop and breathe and realize that we're human mm. in situations and our hearts have been wounded Mm. And and then step up to the plate. No, okay, I need to do my self work. It's and it's not about it's not up to me for to tell that person what they need to do. I'm gonna I'm gonna take care of me, and that's mm. that's, that's the hardest because you really want those people, especially people you live with and you have to see all the time. You want them to go do those things, and especially when you find stuff that you're doing that's helping. Oh, come do this, right? You, yeah. So it, it depends. You know, if you can do things. And really start glowing from inside, no matter what's going on around you. People kind of start going, hmm. yeah. People will pick up on that, Chris. You're right. You're well, right. Over there, they don't act the same anymore when I yell at them. Yes, 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 yes. So, building those boundaries, building building those muscles, those heart muscles. <laughs> I I think it's it's interesting that you mentioned that the body talk system is, you know, coming up and coming through. I mean, I think it's just powerful that this is the time that collectively, globally, right? Like we, we need something yes. like this. Big problems, and, we need big answers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, I think it's wonderful that we're opening ourselves up to it, you know, that yes. more people are interested in these modalities and these tools. And we, yeah, we're looking for those big answers and that, you know, you provide this as a practitioner and that this, this system is available for folks that, that want to dig deep. I think that's, that's fabulous. Yes. It's so fun. There's, it's just, I can't even say how excited I am. There's so many, so many <laughs> tools available and um, I would like to offer your guests um, or your listeners, I should say, um, access to a free download of my book on my Ooh, website. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Please say, share more. What, what, what's, the, what's the goodie that folks can get? They can go to myantidote.life mm -hmm. and download my book, Anxiety Antidote, Your Guide for Life's Challenges. And if they're interested in talking with me, they can also schedule a clarity call there, a free call, and we can talk about what's going on and see if uh, body talks a fit for you or not. And we do do trainings for lay people as well as health professionals. So um, you can also um, contact me there and uh, inquire about that as well. So what is the training process like? Is it very intense or what, what, is that, what does that involve? Uh, for lay people, we have, it's a six and a half hour training. Um, sometimes it's in one day. Usually we split it in two, so it's not so much overwhelm. Sure. Um, five basic techniques, um, you know, brain balance, um, a stress reset, hydration, um, 
body chemistry balance, musculoskeletal, things like that. And we get a little bit into the science, but not too much because we're, it's just for, for everyday use, right? For lay people to use on yourself, for your families to um, really work as kind of a preventative medicine to stabilize things, to strengthen. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's um, a fairly um, short course. Like I say, just six hours and very easy to do for people. And then we also offer the entry level for practitioners is Body Talk Fundamentals. And I work with a partner on that who teaches the fundamentals course. Mm -hmm. And um, that is kind of the gateway in. It's a lot more science. It takes four days. Mm -hmm. um, and it's four full days, really packed in. You're learning intuition, um, how to, how to um, do this whole muscle testing, asking the questions, the protocol, and a, a lot of the basic techniques that are super powerful within the system. So it really gives a nice um, layout of the system for people um, who really want to take it further and help their, their clients and patients. So is, does this training have to happen in person or is there virtual options as well? We do sometimes have um, the virtual options. Right now, our next ones are in person because we're excited about this little window. Yes. Um, and we're holding this it at an outdoor retreat center. So we'll have a lot of uh, nature and involved and um, a lot of space for, for absorbing things. Um, but uh, we do have um, plans for adding in some more virtual for those that can't attend in person. Well, I know I'll be checking it out. So thank you so much for sharing that. And I'll be sure to drop the links to, to your site and to the ebook to learn so much more. Chris, I feel like you gave a wealth of information just in 30 minutes time. I know I've learned so much. I'm sure the folks out there, I'm, I'm so intrigued. You know, I'm a nerd, so I'm definitely going to be looking, okay. <laughs> looking oh, into this. Oh, we need to talk. Yeah. 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 Good yeah. Very good stuff. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to have this conversation with you. I really enjoyed it. Yes. Yes. Likewise. I really appreciate it. And friends out there, you know, be sure to reach out to Chris for that clarity call, learn more about body talk. I know I will. I'm going to download that, that, that book so that I can get the antidote to anxiety as a, as an anxious person. <laughs> um, I think that'll be super duper helpful. So until then take care of yourselves, you know, learn about the body and the awareness and get in communication and know that, you know, we don't have to be reactive. We can all operate through that beautiful heart filter. So from my heart to all of you, thank you so much. And we will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye. Bye.